Today, I'm going to be reviewing Disney's 1985 animated classic, The Black Cauldron. So let's briefly get into the cast and characters. Taryn is voiced by Grant Bardsley. Princess Alonwi is voiced by Susan Sheridan. And the Horn King is voiced by the legendary John Hurt. The positives of the film would be the manner in which Disney animators capture the mythical land of Perdine and the characters that reside within it. The art style of each character throughout the film is very strong and absolutely breathtaking. The musical score in the film is absolutely spectacular because it not only sets the tone of each scene in the film, but also helps to establish the individual personality of each character. Continuing with the positives, the Horn King's original voice actor, John Hurt, brought the Horn King's character and personality to life with such a very genuine performance, with such an iconic voice, and I gave so much authority and command, along with a clear example of how a sorcerer, good or bad, can become corrupted by power and glory, which can lead them down a more sinister path. According to a July 24, 1985 article published by Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times, he praised the film as a, quote, rip-roaring tale of swords and sorcery, evil and revenge, magic and pluck and luck, and it takes us on a journey through a kingdom of some of the most memorable characters in any recent Disney film. He noted how, quote, involving the story was, and felt that the key to the movie is in the richness of the characterizations, and the two best characters, I think, are the Horned King and a fuzzy little creature named Gurgi, end quote. I completely agree with him because any Disney animated or live-action film must be unforgettable. By having characters that the audience can relate to on a personal level while taking audiences on a quest through a land filled with magic, sorcerers, and evil while making the movie's involving storyline full of richness mixed in with the qualities of each character in every scene. Uh, there are no negatives of the film at all because it is such a masterpiece and I love every aspect of the animation along with the voice actors who were absolutely magnificent. A powerful performance in The Black Cauldron would be when Taron realizes that uh, Gurgi is a true friend and he asks the three witches to resurrect him in exchange for the cauldron. Taron chooses to give up his magical sword permanently. And I found that scene absolutely heartwarming and touching because it showed that Taron is a good person in the inside and out and that he would do anything for his friends and would, you know, do anything for anyone, um, and that he's a good person at heart. And at first, the, the three witches are reluctant to to resurrect Gurgi. And so when they finally realize that, you know, Taryn is willing to give up his sword for Gurgi. They're like, you know, okay, we'll 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 resurrect Gurgi, you know, and and in, in exchange for the for, for the um, cauldron. So that's just my little opinion on that. Uh, there are no other versions of uh, the Black Cauldron uh, because, again, it is such a magnificent film and it was absolutely well done and. And I don't think, you know, Disney could ever um, remake this movie movie as a live-action film ever because it, it won't feel the same as it was animated back in 1985. So that's just, again, my little opinion. Uh, yes, I would strongly recommend watching The Black Cauldron because it is such a classic film to watch along with a solid storyline and an uplifting conclusion. Uh, MJ Lapine will be joining us as a special guest giving her take on Disney's 1985 film, The Black Cauldron, so stay tuned. So, let's talk about one of my favorite movies of all time, The Black Cauldron. To me, there is no movie out there that compares to this grand masterpiece that Disney has put out. Now... I would argue that it is a Disney princess movie since Princess Alonwi is kind of, well, the main girl in there. However, Taryn 
Looter, Gurgi, Hedwin, and, uh, oh, jeez. Uh, well, there's just too many side characters to really name, but, <laughs> but to this day, the Horn King haunts me in a good way. I love the fact that he still scares me at the age of 27. Um, I love the fact that it's placed in a D&D setting. The dragons, the landscape, heck, even just the whole come uh, undead part is so invigoratingly beautiful and it's scary. So let's get into the Horn King for the moment. Just the Horn King himself. I do believe that he is based off of Lucifer or the devil because, well, he looks evil and looks like a devil. His whole character is just... He, he wants to, to be able to live forever. He, he wants to, you know, raise an army of the undead. Which says to me he is actually a lich. Now, to those that that don't know what a lich is, it is someone that's wanting to be the, command, the, the main commander of an army of the undead. Uh, they raise the undead, like, like a necromancer, sort of. But... One that's already kind of sort of dead already. So that's why I love him so much. Now we're going to go on to another character, Tarn, the main hero of the story. He's supposed to be the warrior class. He's supposed to be the, the one that takes on the Horn King himself and kills him. Well, in, in a way he does, you know, he, he does kill the Horn King, but... It wasn't really him. It was Gurgi, the lovable furball that sacrifices himself. I cry. I cry at that every time. And I, I, I just... Tarn is supposed to be the main hero, the, the one that's supposed to do all of this good, right? The fact that he even, you know, goes after his pig, Henwin, it makes him that heroic brave warrior princess alonly the princess with the orb or uh what was it uh, i don't even freaking remember what that thing's called well she's supposed to have like this prophetess power and that's why the horn king took her but she is far far beyond needing any man to help her she didn't need a man. She could have gone out on her own. She basically enlisted Tarrant. Now let's move on to Looter. <laughs> the lovable bard that has that ends up being the end the other end of a witch's crush. We'll get into the witches soon enough. Uh I have to feel so bad for him because his harp continuously breaks on him whenever he tells a lie. And whether he omits or tells the truth, it, it, it doesn't matter. His, his, uh, his heart will just break. It, it's just a masterpiece of a movie. Let's move on to Gurgi, the lovable furball that goes munchings and crunchings in here somewhere. Everyone knows that line. It's one of the most famous lines out there, especially in the Disney community. I mean, who? who you either find Gurgi lovable or you find him annoying and you don't like him. You can only have those two. There's no middle ground. But when we come upon Gurgi for the first time, he steals Tarn's apple. Now, I will admit that he is a thief. But he's a furry, lovable, uh, lovable thief that ends up helping... Tarn in the end by sacrificing himself for him and his friends. Thus proving him to be one of the best side characters. Let's move on to Henwin. Henwin the prophetess pig. Where she has to be dipped in some sort of uh, al alchemic 
alchemic, sorry, not alchemic, alchemic concoction done by Dolbin. Sorry, that was that's the older gentleman's name. Uh, in order for her to see the future, I love Henwin as just a character. She's she has spunk. She has curiosity and is just super. She's just super cute. You know, you, you get lovable creatures like Gurky, and you get adorable creatures like Henwin. Now, on to the minion. The Horn King's minion. I do not believe he actually has a name. At least not that I remember. I need to watch the movie again. Um, he served the Horn King in any which way possible, whether that's doing his dirty work or serving him a drink. He is also one of those crazy lunatic bastards that you really don't want to get into a fight with. Sure, you can punt the bitch, but... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for a goblin, how far is that gonna go? <laughs> um, on top of that, he just has so much fear of the Horn King that he... He just serves him out of fear, kind of... Kind of like a worm tail situation, if you if you will. Now for the three witches. You have them. They just want to eat frogs. They want to eat frogs all day, whether that's turning people into frogs or whether that's finding actual frogs. But uh, you know the red, the the, the more uh, big boned one. Um. Yeah, she she developed a little love crush against uh, Luder, which he is obviously not comfortable about. But, you know, she finds him attractive. And in a, in a movie like that, love doesn't exactly say conquer all. Because it wasn't love that conquered the Thorn King. It was friendship. Which is totally... Let's get on to the main event of the of the whole movie the black cauldron itself the thing is supposed to be so terrifying that placing an undead person in it is supposed to raise the rest of the dead now i wouldn't want anything like that actually being a thing here because we would have so many necromantic people it would not be funny uh but with what they say it was a old king that was sealed away in there, how terrifying of a king do you have to be to be sealed away in a cauldron? A cauldron, of all things. It's just terrifying to think about, you know? The movie as a whole, as I said, is bar none the best. Now, I know that's my, own, my opinion and my opinion only. It has second to none in my opinion. That's because the art style is beautiful. You have amazing voice actors. You have... P and you, you just have so much going on in that movie that it's just hard not to look away from every second of it. Will I say that this movie is my favorite? Yes. Yes, it is. Will I continuously watch it until I'm 90 or even dead? Yes, yes, I will. Will I let my kids watch it when they are older? Yes, when they are older. I said when they are older. Because uh, when I was around my my eldest age, I cried whenever I saw the Horn King. I was terrified of him. And I don't want my kids... Mm -hmm. all, it is the best, the best Disney movie out there. It does not have any movie that compares to it. And anyone who says otherwise is either lying to themselves or has not seen the movie. It is a number one recommended on my list that you all should listen to. Or, I'm sorry, that you all should watch. As I said, it is second to none. It's brilliant. It's in one of my favorite settings. Its art style is amazing. It has a great storyline and wonderful voice acting. Thank you for watching and listening to my review of Disney's 1985 animated masterpiece, The Black Cauldron. 
please leave a comment below, press the like button, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Film Express Warrior. As always, watch, review, repeat, and peace out.